Hi everyone, and today I thought I'll start by doing some AP calculus problems. Um, so the first one is to do with limits. Limit as x approaches 1, 3 over x minus 3 over x minus 1. So clearly if you put 1 into here, top and bottom, it'll become a 0 over 0. And when that situation arises, we know we have to use L'Hopital's rule. So and L'Hopital's rule says that if you take the derivative of the top and of the bottom separately, and then you put in you plug in for the one, you'll get this limit. So because otherwise there's no really way to solve this limit, because once you put in this one, zero over zero is undefined. So let's go ahead and do that. So the derivative of the top. Let's just actually rewrite this problem so in terms of exponents so we can use the exponential rules for derivatives. And if we take the derivative, the limit will still be the same, so we can put an equal sign there. And this uh, taking the derivative of minus 3x to the minus 1 power will be negative 3x to the negative 2, just by a simple rule of exponents and then over 1. And that gives us negative 3. So that's the first problem. The next problem we'll be doing is more of a word problem. And it's to do with a rectangle inscribed between two lines. So this is what the problem is. Again, it's an AP math problem. So um, a rectangle with one side on the x-axis is inscribed in a triangle formed by the lines y is equal to x, y is equal to 0, and 2x plus y is equal to 12. So there's a rectangle inscribed in a triangle, and this triangle is formed by three lines. Um, y is equal to 0, y is equal to x, and um, y is equal to negative 2x plus 12. Originally the problem said um, 2x plus y is equal to 12, but that's equal to negative 2x plus 12. So the next thing we should do is graph it, because that will give us a visual understanding. Now, this entire problem is going to take place in the first quadrant, so that's all that I'm going to draw. Um, so y is equal to 0 is just the x-axis, so that's the first line. y is equal to x is here, and y is equal to negative 2x plus 12 has an intercept at positive 12 and goes down here, and this is here. 6. So, and this is the triangle that the problem is talking about. This rectangle is going to be inscribed in this triangle. So let's just draw this rectangle. And what do we want to do with this rectangle? We want to m maximize its area. So what's the maximi maximum area this can have? Right here. So this would of course mean that we have to maximize the length and the width, right? Because that's what the area of a rectangle is, length times width. And if both of these things are maximized, we will have the greatest possible area. So conceptually, right, let's just, what we have here is that we want to have this y and then times this x1 and x2. And this is, these, this is the y right here. So let's just start writing some equations for this. So y1 is equal to x1. Again, just we're taking these equations here from the top and just writing them here. And y1 is equal to negative 2x2 plus 12. So I'm just labeling this here as x2 and this here as x1. And both of these equations will have the same y. So now we know that the length or rather the height of this um, 
of this rectangle is y1 and the width of this or the length of this along the x-axis is x2 minus x1 and we see that just by looking here so x2 minus x1 times y1 and that will be the area so again let's go back here so this is this is the problem conceptually what we have to do next is redefine everything in terms of one variable right and we can see how to do that because we can put everything in terms of y and then we have to take the derivative and finding the derivative equated to zero and that'll maximize that'll, then you'll find the maximum y so let's just start let's just start with writing the problem in terms of one variable so in terms of one one variable right we start out with this, y1 times x2 minus x1, and then we get a is equal to y1 times, uh, if we get here, if we look here, um, x2 in terms of y is actually um, 12 minus y, just bring the y here, and then over 2. That's what x2 is. So 12 minus y over 2 minus an x1 we know is just y. So actually I'm just going to get rid of the y's, y1's, because we only have one y in this case. Um, so anyways, that's the area in terms of one, one variable. Taking the derivative of this, or actually before we take the derivative, let's simplify this more. So a is equal to, if we multiply the y inside, we get 12y squared, or 12, oops, sorry, 12y minus y squared over 2 minus y squared, which is then simplified to 12y minus 3y squared. I'm just taking it all under the same denominator, and further simplified to 6y minus 1.5y squared. That's just the 2 divided over both of those things. So the next part of this problem is to take the derivative of this. So the derivative of this is, I'll label it that, is, um, so the original in terms of y is 6y minus 1.5 y squared and the the derivative of this is 6 minus mm, 3 y and we equate this to 0 so 3 y um, is equal to 6 or 6 minus 3 y is equal to 0 3 y is equal to 6 y is equal to 2 and we plug this 2 back in to our original equation for area which is right here and 6 times 2 minus 1.5 2 squared and this will give us the maximum area 12 minus um, 6 and that equals to 6 so our maximum area is 6